symptomatic accessory navicular treated with endoscopic accessory navicular and partial navicular resection. The foot is placed on the table, with the lateral side facing down. On the medial surface, two plant portals are marked one centimeter away from the edges of the synchondrosis between the accessory navicular and the navicular. 5 mm skin incisions are made at the marks, blunt dissection is performed to reach the synchondrosis. A small curette is introduced through the portal and advanced into the synchondrosis. The curette is twisted to destabilize the synchondrosis. A 3 mm hooded abrasion burr is introduced through the portal, and the accessory navicular is resected under fluoroscopic guidance. After abrading majority of the bone, a 2.3 mm 30-degree arthroscope and a 3 mm abrasion burr are introduced through the portals, and the accessory navicular remnant is resected. Heat necrosis is a complication that requires careful attention. It is challenging to resect the portion of the accessory near the skin since the medial foot makes it difficult to navigate the abrasion burr, which gradually heats up over time. Thus, while resecting the portion of the accessory navicular near the skin, the burr should be cooled down with endoscopic saline. The bone is yellow and the surrounding soft tissue is white, therefore complete resection can be confirmed by the color. After the resecting the accessory navicular, the prominence of the navicular remains palpable. With the sole of the foot on the table, the abrasion burr is introduced through the proximal portal, and the navicular prominence is resected under fluoroscopic guidance until it is no longer palpable. The debris was cleaned using endoscopic saline. We do not perform posterior tibialis tendon reattachment because the space remaining after bone resection is filled with tendon-like tissue by the time of follow-up MRIs at a year. The skin incisions are sutured with 5-0 nylon. Postoperative care. Full weight bearing with a baloney splint is initiated one day postoperatively. The splint and sutures are removed three weeks postoperatively. Jogging is initiated 10 weeks postoperatively, and the patient is allowed to freely participate in sports activities 12 weeks postoperatively, as tolerated.